Coming up, why would you upgrade your Artillery Sidewinder X1, SKR-13, and the TFT-35 might be a reason. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Chris Sergeant Taz here, and today I'm going to go over because I didn't get the video of me putting it in, an SKR 1.3 and a TFT 35, and the reasons I did it. So it started off as, the, the printer's great as is, don't get me wrong, but my problem was is doing two color options with a, a, a fill or what have you, change, swap, whatever you want to call it, I couldn't uh, achieve with the stock firmware. Naturally, I assumed it wouldn't be a problem once I upgraded to like the new Marlin or, or, or into the, you know, the 2.0 realm of Marlin itself. That's the case. The original LCL, the original TFT that's on here does not allow for you for to do like M600 commands or do any color changing or swapping via the screen, no matter if you're using USB, SD, what have you. You'd have to actually print or not pr slice two separate files and then have have your end code leave the everything warmed up to, to accomplish this, which seems to be counterproductive when the older printers, you can just put a command in G code and do a swap real time with notification. It, it, you know, it'll park the nozzle and, and swap. So that was my big reason for upgrading the board. That and it's only eight bit. So the MKS Gen L is what originally comes on this board. It's not by MakerBase, just so we're clear. So it's it's a it's a clone copy of the MK, uh, MKS Gen L board. So figure while I was there, I might as well upgrade to the 32 bit. Um, what have I found with that? Well, honestly, it seems like my prints come out a lot better with the 32 bit it, it doesn't feel like it's struggling to get through the code so I think that's an improvement there um, the installation went really smooth what didn't go smooth was the recording of the installation yeah sorry guys um, I did do like a step-by-step -step walkthrough of what I was doing but for some unknown reason the new camera that I got recorded it but it was like in total darkness and the audio was like not great that's what I get for buying a $60 camera off of Banggood so that's my own fault I'm gonna have to get something different and hook something up better next time because I will be doing the MKS Gen L 32-bit board upgrade on my second one after I've done this I, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't so I'm gonna be upgrading my artillery uh, version 2 up to speed and um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the display yet I'm thinking possibly just using one of my old Ender displays and see how that goes for a little bit to see if I want to swap out or change but um, in the upcoming section you're going to see that I printed out a whole new case um, I took off the uh, TFT that was originally on the V1 that I just, just upgraded and I was surprised to find out that the whole LCD isn't cut out. So all the stuff that I had downloaded prior, thinking I'd be ahead of the game with, I had to, I had the case printed and it just didn't work out. That's what happens with three D printers and, and and modding. So it's okay. Um, I reformatted and made for this one. Now I don't know about version two if the, the holes any wider or not. So. On the file that I have linked below it's going to be made for the version one I know definitely the other versions I'm not really clear on yet so but you can modify my file to fit yours if you need to so it isn't that hard I just made it so it would cover the area and drop down the screen a bit it's for the TFT 35 which is dual so it's nice so you get an emulation of an L LCD, which actually works with all your command codes, which, like I said, in the upcoming 
segment here. I did record some of the stuff again, so I took I took my printer back apart for you guys and kind of went over the basics. But I'm not gonna unplug everything and start from scratch and pretend that I I know exactly what I was doing when I did it. I didn't know for sure. Now what I but basically the board fits actually back in the existing spot. No modification needed. Um, I'm gonna add. Uh, blower fan over the steppers as opposed to this obnoxiously loud case fan. So that's going to be another change I'm going to do on this guy. Maybe I'll do this now while I have it open. Possibly. But um, sorry if I didn't get the video, guys. I, I really tried. I have to do this on my iPhone because it actually works. So hopefully I get a better setup and, and get more in-depth of what I did next time. So, this is your, well, this is a, one of the older TFT screens. I don't have the actual bezel right now. It's somewhere lost in my mile of parts. But, um, I just disconnected it. I took out the, um, USB and SD card. I put a cap in that because I'm not going to need it because the, um, TFT 35 that I have actually already has a nice USB on it and a full size SD card on it, which is really cool. So, got rid of that, and then I pulled out this bad boy here. This is the the version of uh, the Maker. It's 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 a clone of the Maker Base, because obviously on the back there's none of their markings. There's no Maker Base markings on it, so it's 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 a copy of the the Gen L board. Um, I don't think that's a really horrible thing. I don't know how much they save putting a copy of it in with how much they go for, but who knows. Anyhow, I think the upgrade went fairly easy. Um, one thing I'm still stuck on, and I haven't finished yet, was the LEDs. Um, but there's nothing good on the SKR 1.3 to plug into to get the LEDs working properly because there's our LEDs on the on the, on the artillery are five pins. Where's a four? Anyhow, it will not plug in seamlessly to your newer board. Um, I'm actually hoping when I get the newer 32-bit version of the Gen L board that it, it'll have the pinouts I want for it. But right now, I'm running without the LEDs because it runs in analog more or less. It's not like the, um, it uses the pixel LED on the uh, uh, hot end side, but it's not meant to communicate with that, that the, the way they got it set up. So there's an additional, well, I think it's one or two wires that you have to source somewhere to get the color going. And all the setups I've read, I don't see how I can split that signal. Um, I did purchase a couple of these guys. And I'm probably going to follow like um, Chris Riley's video. Get dark. Hold on. <laughs> Chris Riley's video on setting this up. I think he had three of these set up, daisy chained, and then he could run the three pins or the red, blue, and green to where you needed to run it to and then coat it in the Marlin. So hopefully I'll come up with that solution and put it up here for you guys. Barring any of for seen video tragedies. Other than that, um, like I said, in the next portion here is going to be the overview of how it looks, what I did to some degree, and then show you a cop, uh, a more or less one of the reasons I did it. So it'll be like how I set up Cura and how I do a, how I did a print. So that's going to be an, another episode, unfortunately, because I need to record that with Cura and how I use the command codes and then do the project. So I'm going to do that for another episode. 
But keep in mind, the reason why I initially did this is because I couldn't do my filament swaps. I could pause at height with Octoprint, but then you still get the markings on your print because it's still hot, hot, and you're still melting filament and it's still kind of oozing through. So I'd get like marks all over my print. I couldn't make a nice two color project with filament swap. So the main reason for doing the board and the, the screen swap was for this, which worked out really well. As you'll see in a second or two, how it looks. I mean, it looks nice. And then like I said, I'll do the, I'm gonna do the next video and show you how to use Cura, port it over to your printer with this upgrade and then make it work for your two color project. So other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you've had a wonderful new year. I'm sorry for the delay in my videos. Um, I'm trying to get some kind of recording better. I, I Some of the stuff turns out and some of it doesn't sometimes. And I'm not that great at editing. So bear with me. I'll get better, I promise. And uh, thanks for watching. See ya.